The scientists say they've discovered signs of a reservoir of liquid water on Mars, deep in the rocky outer crust of the planet. The study, based on seismic measurements from NASA's InSight lander, suggests there may be enough water for a global ocean, but it's 11 to 20 kilometres down in the Martian crust. Let's get more on that story now. Professor Michael Manga from the University of California, Berkeley, joins us now. Professor Manga, you were part of this research. It involved a lot of listening, as I understand it. Can you tell us about how this liquid water was discovered? The uh, Mars InSight team recorded the vibrations of the ground that are produced by Mars quakes and the vibrations produced by impacts that hit the surface from meteorites. The speed at which those uh, seismic waves travel depend on properties of the crust, what the rock is made of, whether there are fractures inside the crust, and what is inside those cracks. And uh, the speed of the seismic waves is best explained by having a cracked crust full of water. So why is this so exciting to find liquid water? We know that early Mars had lots of liquid water on its surface. We see evidence for um, rivers, past lakes, maybe even oceans. Uh, water is very important for the climate. I think people in Australia understand this well. Uh, Mars uh, water is also important for habitability. Mars right now is quite dry. And so an open question is, where did all this water go? Some was lost to space. And maybe much of this water is now sitting deep underground uh, in groundwater. Does this get us closer to answering the question of, is there life on Mars? It's only a very small part. Uh, life needs more than, life needs water, but it needs more than water. It needs an energy source and life has to originate. But it does tell us that one place that we should be looking for life on Mars would be deep underground or places where this deep groundwater may have come back up to the surface. Speaking of deep, as we said there, it's a depth between 11 and 20 kilometres down, so a, a fair way down. Do we know how much is down there? Uh, if we take all the water stored as groundwater and move it up to the surface, it would be equivalent to an ocean one to two kilometres deep. And so it's a lot of water. It's a lot. And as you say, it's water that wasn't lost to space um, because we know that studies show there was once rivers and lakes, but lost to space. Uh, could this water deep down ever be used? That's an awfully deep uh, well we would need to drill. Mm. Um, I think the best way to find that water at the surface would be to look for places where geological activity brings that water back up to the surface. So places that would be similar to springs or along faults where tectonic activity may enable water to come to the surface. And so armed with this research, what is next for your teams? Uh, it would be nice to be able to put together this observation of deep water with what we know the water cycle used to be to try and understand how this water got deep underground and its connection to the water being lost to space today. Professor Michael Mango from the University of California, Berkeley, thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure.